This challenge is called More SQL I. It's a medium level challenge from the web exploitation category from the PICO CTF 2023 event. The description says, can you find the flag on this website? Additional details will be available after launching your challenge instance. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start the challenge instance by clicking on the blue button right here. So after a few moments, the challenge description page will change. And then in the description page, it'll read, try to find the flag here. And then there's a link. We can right click on this link and click on open the link in the new tab. And then we can access the link in our web browser. So it says security challenge, please log in. So I wrote a document to help us work through this challenge. And you can find it in the video description, but uh, it's over here on my GitHub page. So to get the required info from the database to complete the challenge, we need to achieve the following major goals. So goal A is to break into the website using the SQL login bypass technique. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to inject the following code into the login page at the username field. So it's this right here, it's single quote, or one equals one dash dash space. So this is the standard SQL login bypass payload. So we can just copy it. And then we can go back to the challenge page to the, uh, to the website. And then in the username field, we can paste this payload in. And in the password field, we can just type in test. So normally if a login page is susceptible to SQL injection. This is going to allow us to log in, but it doesn't work. So we can go back to the document and we see here, step two, observe why it didn't work. So the usual order of username first and then the password is reversed in the SQL query that we are shown. So if we take a look at the SQL query that we're shown here, we submitted username as the payload here and password as test. But inside of the SQL system, it, uh, the query is select ID from users where password equals something and username equals something else. So in this case, the usual order has been reversed. So password has been put first and username has been put second. So if we were to insert this payload into password, then we should be able to log in because the last part of this payload comments out the rest of the query, which is this portion right here. So we can move on to the next step. The next step is inject the following code into the password field. So this is the same injection string, so we can copy it and then go back to the web page and we can click back in the browser. So we can go back to the, uh, to the login form. So we can replace the username field with anything we want. And then the password field, we're going to paste in the SQL bypass injection string and then click on login. And now we're logged into the application. Okay. So at this point, we see that there is some sort of um, search functionality in here. So what we need to do is we need to figure out if this form is susceptible to SQL injection as well. So if we go back to the document, we're now on objective B, which is to determine how many columns from the original query and the type of SQL software, okay? So the first step is to provide a valid response from the database, but also send a union select query to determine how many columns the original query returned. So we could provide the following code to the search field. So first of all, what we're doing is we're prov providing a valid, a valid um, return entry from the, uh, from the database. As well, we're going to include our union select, and then we're going to try to determine how many columns are in here. 
So this payload here is testing if there is one column returned by the query. And we can copy this and then go back to the web page and then paste in the query here. So Algiers is the name of uh, one of the cities listed in the database. But we're also going to union select and see if there is one column included in this query. So we click on search and nothing appears. So nothing appears because we don't have the right number of columns. So obviously, one column was not the right number of columns. So if we go back to the guide document, we've got step two, increment the payload and test if there are two columns with the following code. So this is the, the same payload as last one, except we've included a second column, which is what these nulls are keeping track of. So we use nulls because this is the um, this is the most reliable method to test for columns using union select. So we can copy this code and then go back to the web app and paste in this payload to test if there are two columns in this query. So we can click on search again and nothing appears one more time. So there's not one column, there's not two columns. So we just need to keep on working and uh, test if there are three columns. So back at the, uh, the document, we're on step three, increment the payload again and test if there are three columns. So we've got null, null, null in the payload to test if there are three columns. We can copy this and then go back to the web app and paste this in, click on search, and we get something we uh, we get something back from the system so we managed to determine that there are three columns in this query because we're able to do the union select successfully and get information back from the database so the next thing we need to do is step four determine which type of sql software is being used so if we look at the hint on the challenge description page of the pico ctf website it says SQLite Lite, which points to the SQL system used as SQLite. So we'll be using SQLite functions and syntax to get more database info. So if we go over to the challenge page over here and we click on hints, then it says SQLite Lite. So this means that the system being used is SQLite. And uh, we need to know this because the the functions and the methods of getting more information from, from the database varies from, from different, uh, among the different types of SQL software. So now that we know that we're dealing with SQL, SQLite, we can move on to part C. So part C is to extract the desired info from the database. Step one. Using the SQLite function, determine which tables exist on the database with the following payload. So now we're going to do the same union SQL select payload, except the third column is not going to be null. It's going to be name from the SQLite master table, where the type is equal to table. So this is going to let us know how many tables are in this database. So we can just copy this payload, go back to the web page, and paste in the payload, and then click on search. And we see that there are these tables in the database. So there's hints, more table, offices, and users. So the other three tables, hints, offices, and users, they don't contain the information we're looking for. We want to take a look at this table, the more table table. So let's move on. So the next step is to use the SQL like syntax to retrieve columns from the table we're interested in. So this is the same payload as uh, the other one, except that the third column is now name from pragma underscore table info more table. And this is going to give us the, um, the column information from the more table table. So we can copy the payload and then go back to the website and paste in the payload and click search. All right, so in the results, we see that there are two columns. There is flag and there is ID. 
So we're interested in this flag column right here. And that means that we're going to do step three, get all rows from the flag column in the more table table. So this is a very straightforward query. So the third column in, this, in the union SQL select is just to get the flag column from the more table table. So we can copy this payload, go back to the web app and paste in the payload and click search. All right, so in the output we see here, it says, if you were here, you must have seen it. And the second entry here is the flag for this challenge. All we need to do is copy the flag, then go back to the challenge description here. And at the bottom, in the flag submission field, paste in the flag and click on submit flag. And then we're finished. Hey there, hacker frogs. Are you enjoying this workshop? Learning new concepts and skills? If so, there's a way you can support the channel. And it's totally free. Just click on the subscribe button below the video. Also, click on the like button. And if you have questions or comments on this workshop, please leave them below the video. Thanks for listening. And now, back to our scheduled programming.